Hey everybody, Alex from Corso Systems here. If you saw our blog post recently about chat GPT and ignition perspective, uh, where we basically fed all of the information to chat GPT to generate a view and then modify some things, uh, you might be interested in this. We're calling this a hard mode internally. We're using chat GPT to develop a lot of this from scratch as much as possible. And so first we're gonna start out and just do a quick run through. Um, we're telling ChatGPT to create an ignition perspective view with a text field and a label uh, with a button to save that to the database. And that comes back with some directions as we can assume ChatGPT doesn't know how to do anything with ignition at this point. So maybe it found this on the internet. It's giving us instructions on how to do what we're trying to do and the script that we would wanna use, which looks basically correct. So we're gonna ask it what information chat GPT needs to generate the JSON for an ignition perspective view. And that's gonna give us an example of everything that it would need to see uh, to do that for us. Component types, properties, positions, any bindings, etc. cetera. Um, and then it gives us a basic view example here. Uh, we're gonna notice a few different problems with this. Uh, the way you would find those out is build a view in perspective, export the JSON, and compare it to what you see here. The main items to note are the ia.input.text field. Uh, this should be text dash field, all lowercase, not one word. Uh, the children here from the container need to be moved up to be a child above this. It's not contained within props. Uh, and position for each of the components is not contained within props. It would be a separate child of that object and, or a component. So we tell it, you know, this code is incorrect. The type for the text field should be changed uh, and children should be separated out. And that comes out with this. Uh, we also compare this to a perspective view and we see that the position needs to be brought up one level as well. So we tell it that and it regenerates the JSON here for the view and we can import that in and we see a view with a label and a text field. Nothing earth shattering there. Uh, just to keep it complicated and interesting, we ask if it knows the format for pipes in Ignition Perspective, keeping in mind that pipes came out after 2021, which is when OpenAI claims the chat GPT training stopped. Uh, so it tells us it doesn't know how to deal with pipes, but we can use a path component and it gives us code for that, which we're not gonna mess with that. So I'm gonna add pipes in perspective to a view and copy them to get the JSON. And I paste that in here. So that analyzes the pipe JSON and gives me a representation of what the view would look like with a custom pipe component as a child of the root container. Uh, it comes back and it makes some assumptions, uh, type identifier of custom.pipe. We'll have to replace that with an actual identifier for the custom pipe component we're using. And it says we can import that in, which will run into some errors. Uh, most notably, we need to tell it where to place the pipes in the view because pipes are a slightly different piece of the puzzle than a component. They exist on the background layer of the container. They're not a separate component within the container. So this regenerates JSON and brings pipes out from being a separate component and pulls it into the props uh, node in the JS. And that works. We also noticed that the window, and this is because I was having to add this in manually, um, to get the window to import, it's missing the custom params and props nodes of the root container. Uh, so we put those in, even though they're empty, they need to be there. So now what we're gonna do is take the previous response with just the pipes and add the first name label and field from the earlier response. And that's going to combine the pipes here with the children on the root container, the first name label, uh, and we also have a last name label and text field as well. And we can import that in and that comes across no problem. And we're gonna look at a pump graphic. From the component palette, we can see that there's a pump graphic and a tank graphic. Um, so we're gonna pass in a JSON copy of the pump in the cylindrical tank. Scroll down to the bottom. It will add those as children um, below the last name and first name fields. Now we're gonna combine the pump and tank with a pipe. So we build a view that has that example of what that pipe looks like there, just to give it the right coordinates and, and to show that it's only a single pipe, not a U-shape like we had been working with before. So that generates the new pipe format along with the first name label because we didn't tell it to do anything with the pump and tank yet. Um, so now we're giving it a format for pipes um, simply to connect the pump and the tank graphic. And we tell it the pipe coordinates are relative to the pump and the tank because the pump and the tank have uh, snap points that you can use for the pipe tool. 
we tell it that and then we also tell it it can remove the pipes from the previous response because we don't need to have all of the pipes showing so this gives us the json representation of the perspective view uh, with the first name label and text field last name label and text field pump and take components and the new pipe to connect the pump and the tank so it's going to start generating json and it reaches the limit of what it can output at one time so we type in continue it continues even though it's still code it breaks the code formatting because it's in the middle of a JSON object here. So this continues putting together the view for us. Here's the pump and the tank and the pipes up top. So now we can copy this code block, copy this text and combine that in a text editor. And that will combine everything into one JSON object that we can then import into our view. And we'll see that the pump and the tank are located where they were originally on the view. It hasn't moved them anywhere. Um, so we're going to tell it to move those up below the last name field and tell it that the pipe coordinates are relative to the pump and take positions so everything needs to be moved and adjusted accordingly and that will generate more json again that's a long output so we go to continue and this tells us what we're looking to do and i say that looks better except the pipe position is too far down and to the left compared to the original orientation it moved things in a wonky way um, also the tank is too high because we didn't specify that the tank needed to be low, below last name, we specified the pump. Now we're gonna tell it to adjust that based on the tank's Y location. So it generates a new view for us and we continue all the way down and the tank is still high. So we tell it to lower down and regenerate. It lowers it down, still looks a little wonky from a design perspective. So we tell it to lower it a little bit down further, uh, but we don't need to generate new JSON right now because we're going to give it some more information. So it tells us, thanks for the additional input. I'll lower it next time I do this. If you have any further modifications, let me know. Now we want to add a button to the perspective view. We specify where it should go below the tank, left aligned with the last name label. And we want an on-click event to write the value from the first name and last name text fields to a database called people. Give it a database name as well. And this is the same database I used from the last post. Uh, so just keeping the first name and last name there to use the same database table. So this adds the button to the mix. Again, we have to continue. Now we have to continue twice. And this gives us a button uh, with an on-click event and a script. And we will quickly see that there are some problems with what it generated here, but we can teach it what it needs to do. So if we look at a JSON object from a view, that actually works. We see that the events node is a child of the button. It's not contained within the props node like ChatGPT gave us. Also within the events node, there's a child called DOM and the onclick event goes below that. Then we tell it to regenerate the perspective view. So it does, we continue a couple times and this looks more in line with what we're looking for. So we compare that and we see if that imports and we uh, get some problems there because we're trying to uh, look at self.view.custom.firstName field and last name field, and those are not bound to anything because we haven't told it to bind those to anything. Also, what we're gonna find here is it has a name value as a child of props on each of the components. It's not under the meta node like it needs to be. So when we're trying to do a find of that component of the text field or the text field underscore zero, like it's called them in the tree. It doesn't find those because they're named something else. So we're gonna tell it to fix that. We're also gonna tell it to change from an ia.display.button, which it is right here, to an ia.input.button, which is the correct format. And we also tell it the quotes within the script need to be escaped uh, because here, this whole script value is wrapped in quotes and within that, we have quotes around the database name and quotes around the query. So these quotes inside this value need to be escaped, which they would be if you export JSON from a working view. So that fixes the problem. Although uh, we'll notice it still doesn't properly escape those uh, here in the script. So we just manually do that. There are some efficiencies to be had by taking what this does and fixing it manually. Uh, we also exported a button that worked and we saw it has a version property um, and we also want to bi-directionally bind the value of the text fields to those custom properties because when we clicked the button we didn't get a value in the database because it was reading that value even though we typed something into the text field it didn't populate properly into the pretty that we were tying it to or we thought we were tying it to also we noticed that the pump the tank and the pipe are in weird positions uh, we give it a couple tries here to fix that 
through ChatGPT, but run into some problems. So there are things like the pump graphics and tank graphics and pipes where if you're not going to explicitly specify the positions, it makes sense to uh, do those manually as well. So this fixes the version node and bidirectionally binds things. It generates all the code and almost works. So now we're gonna tell it to properly um, bidirectionally bind things because it did not bind them at all. It didn't know how. Uh, so I pass in a bidirectional binding example um, by passing in the text field and specifying that this is the format of a text field with a bidirectional binding and the property that it's on. Um, and I tell it to update only those JSON objects so we don't have to deal with the entirety of the response because that takes a while to type out. So here this updates the first name and last name field uh, with the bindings properly. So now that will work when we click the database button to, or the button to save to the database. So now the tank's in the correct spot, the pipe is too high and the pump's even higher. So we tell it to update it one more time. And after this, we're giving up on that and just doing that manually if we want, because it's not doing it enough. So here we say we want to do tag bindings. This is kind of the last piece of the puzzle for most of the things you would need to do in perspective. Um, so we give it a tag binding on the tank graphic. In this case, that goes to a value property. So the property config props.value has a binding. It's a tag binding. And here's the values we're passing in. And we tell it that the tag path node is made up of two arguments, a tag provider name in brackets and a tag path after the bracket. So it says, thanks. Here's the JSON structure with the tag binding. So it's adding that into the tank component for us. Tells us what it's doing and tells us you can update this yourself if you would like. Or in the next prompt, we're going to tell it what we want it to do. And we're also telling it the pump graphic has a similar format, except it's bound to a different property. In this case, props.value.text, not just props.value. So we tell it to generate the pump graphic JSON and the tank graphic JSON. And we want to bind to the underscore pump value tag and the underscore tank value tag, both in the default tag provider. So we'll notice here that gives us the default underscore pump value on the pump and the default underscore tank value on the tank, which is exactly what we want that to do. Um, and then we tell it to generate a new JSON response incorporating all of the above, and that spits out a, a new response. This time it seems like it figured out the problem with the code blocks, and that generates a new view that then we can import and get the final version of what we're looking for. That gives us this view. Uh, so we have a pump value and a tank value. I can type in uh, first name, just do video run through. And then if I were to change this pump value to 78 and the tank value to 54 uh, in the tag browser, I would just have that hidden for privacy on this project. Um, those update everything. Unlike the last post, we didn't tell it to clear out the button um, when I hit save, but that will uh, save what we're trying to do. And then here I will pull in the data and you'll see my, my testing here where we got blank values because we weren't properly uh, bound to the properties. And here we see video run through that I just clicked on came through. Uh, so now we are good to go. And you'll notice here the pump position is pretty wonky. So if we want to you know, move that into the right spot and I mean, that looks close enough, but the pipe tool can be a little bit uh, problematic sometimes to use, but you know, like that. And then if we wanted this to go behind the tank, maybe we you know, extend that over or something. There are certain things where it's easier to just do it manually unless you're going to very explicitly specify things like the pipe positions and whatnot for graphics. So there you go. We hope that that showed you a quick example of how to build a view from scratch using ChatGPT. And, you know, I think we're, uh, we're using ChatGPT4 uh, for the model for this. In the previous post, we used GPT 3.5 and that Gave us some different results, but we're pretty excited with what we were able to come up with. Thanks for checking it out.